Hello, I'm Ryan F9, and these helmets offer the best airflow. You should know right away that open faces don't count. Obviously, half and three quarter helmets let me feel every whip of the wind, but nobody needs a video to tell them that. The most ventilated full face in the world is an MX helmet called the F4. But it isn't here because Climb stopped making it. Son of a bitch. The closest thing we have in 2017 is this, Climb's F3. It's a successor to the F4, but as the numbers suggest, it's also a step backwards. The old F4 had three crown vents, which made for this rooster comb style and flowed a ton of air. But the F3 has gone back to a single crown opening. It also has 19 vents in total, which is impressive, although far less so than the 41 vents that the F4 boasted. But the F3 has a bigger eye port than the previous version, so it wins in that respect. The empty field of vision is actually a bit spooky when you first put the helmet on, almost like you're not wearing a helmet at all. Any full-frame goggle can fit in here with room to spare, by the way, and extra room means extra airflow. The F3 also gets the same neutral head shape as its predecessor. The padding is precise, yet sparing, so there's lots of empty space around your ears and the top of your head for air to escape. You can actually see the EPS foam and the chimney holes in most places. The vents are unobstructed too. This bare metal mesh won't slow the wind down at all, which is great for ventilation. Only the main chin bar vent is actually backed with open cell foam, but honestly, I'd rip it out. The foam isn't very effective at stopping debris anyway, and you'll get more airflow without it. So the F3 is a hugely vented MX bucket, and the angular design is more gorgeous than ever, but I still miss the F4. It was in a class of its own for ventilation, and the ECE version was the lightest MX helmet ever. Yes, it cost $530, and no, nobody bought one, not even me, but from a gear geek's perspective, it's a tragedy to see the F4 go. Oh wait, you can still buy F4s and they're only $400 on clearance, which is the same as a brand new F3. Other reviewers might be ass kissing this helmet and yeah, I'll join the party eventually because it is a great venter. But while there are still F4 ECEs out there, buy that instead. Just avoid the Snell version because it's a full pound heavier. Now, for a sport helmet that flows a tornado of air, we have HJC's Arfa 11 Pro. I bet you wish I'd stop talking about this helmet. I'm sure as hell bored of bringing it up, but the Arfa 11 does vent better than any other sport bucket, so I couldn't avoid including it. HJC doubled the number of vents since the Arfa 10, which wasn't exactly a stuffy helmet to begin with, but it's not just the number of openings, it's the way they're designed. HJC uses cowls to create high pressure zones at the intakes and low pressure zones at the exhausts. That literally sucks cool air in and draws hot air out. When I wear this helmet, I can actually feel the little torrents of air against my skin. Now the Arfa 11 is so breezy that it can be downright cold in the spring or fall. So HAC made all the front facing vents active. This one closes here. These two close from the inside. The forehead vent like this. And these crown vents have six different aperture settings via these little wheels, which are also rubberized to catch your gloves. I'll run the rest of the stats real quick because I've already lost too much of my life talking about the Arfa 11. Center locking visor, doesn't screw over the lefties. It had a dark shield included in the box. Unfortunately, it has mountainous tear off pegs, just like the clear version, and that annoys my peripheries. The field of vision through the eye port has been extended vertically for better visibility in the full tuck position. Speaking of which, emergency quick release cheek pads also hint at racing use, but no Snell sticker. You gotta think HJC wanted one for their Super Sport helmet, so I can only assume that they failed the test. Arf 11 Pros are ultra light, 1,420 grams, and very slim with the carbon, Kevlar, and fiberglass shell, so I guess it's not really that surprising that they lack a bit of impact absorption. Also, I'm not sure what HJC was doing when they made the sizing chart, maybe drinking or smoking or wearing a toque, because the Arf 11 fits way too small order size up. Anyway, this $500 helmet is still the most ventilated sport bucket on the market. In fact, it's generally quite an impressive lid, rivaling the more expensive showy RF1200. HJC just loses a few points for missing out on that Snell sticker, and a couple more for being loud as shit. Earplug users only, please. Now, the best ventilated ADV helmet is a dinosaur. AGV's AX8 Dual Evo. AGV came early to the dual sport game with the AX8. We've seen a load of better helmets since, but none of them have been able to touch it for ventilation. Why? Well, AGV made the main vent cover removable, and that's gonna leave a big hole in the chin bar, which you can fill with the metal grate off an AX8 motocross helmet. Of course, that part is getting harder and harder to find as the clock ticks on this model. So personally, what I do is take the open cell foam backing off the old vent cover, 
and glue it into the aperture. It's a garbage hack, but I now have an ADV helmet that vents like an MX lid. Sure, I'll get wet and dusty pretty fast, but that just comes with the territory. Other ventilation on the AX8 Dual is pretty mediocre. Just a couple active forehead vents, a teeny tiny chimney up top, we have two passive exhaust slits high and low on the rear, and then jack shit around the back of the head. The AX8 is average in other respects too. It's no silent Schubert E1, but it's not a noisy MX9 either. And it's reasonably light, just under 1600 grams, which puts it in the middle of the pack. The shell is a fiberglass Kevlar and carbon composite, which is everyone's go-to premium blend. Only weird thing is that the AX8 is surprisingly thick. Normally manufacturers will use a fancy, hard and durable shell as an excuse to use less EPS foam, thereby creating a slimmer helmet that passes the same safety ratings, but AGV obviously didn't take that approach. I have a sneaking suspicion that this is a very safe helmet, probably the most protective dual sport lid on the market. Fitment-wise, the AX8 is abnormally short. By that I mean it bottoms out somewhere around my jawline, whereas most helmets will sit a little bit further down. While the AX8 is the most ventilated ADV helmet, provided you remove that chin bar cover, I should also mention two close seconds. The Climb Krios flows a ton of air on the premium end, and the Bell MX-9 Adventure offers the most breeze for your buck. And finally, the best ventilated modular helmet is Bell's Revolver Evo. This is the only time you're gonna see me recommend a revolver, because it flows air for all the wrong reasons. Basically, it's leaky. Every seam, every piece of hardware, the visor itself, None of it seals properly. There are a million gaps, and that means a million holes for air to come in and out. Plus it's super drafty under the chin bar with this curtain removed. So the Revolver is the coolest modular helmet to wear on a hot day, but it also whistles, it whines, and it's damp in the rain. I suppose I should mention that there's a chin bar vent, which takes the force of a thousand suns to operate. And then there's two forehead vents, also difficult to use. And around the back, four passive exhaust slits. All that though, is pretty beside the point. Other things I dislike. The shield mechanism is the least satisfying thing in the world. It doesn't lock, it doesn't click shut, it just vaguely stops moving somewhere near the bottom. And then at 1,870 grams, this helmet really has no business calling itself lightweight polycarbonate. And then the shell size. Bell only makes two of them, so if you're a medium, you'll get the distinct pleasure of sharing the same bobblehead as a double XL. But Bell is more clever than they look. The Revolver is one of the only modular helmets designed for a tucked riding position, so a lot of sport bike guys are pigeonholed into buying one. And then Bell also threw a sun visor in here which drops and retracts with surprising vigor. Plus there are little niceties like a magnetic chin strap. And the graphics are incredible. This is one of the nicest paint jobs I've seen, and Bell basically gives it away. When you look at companies like Arai, who charge about $200 extra for graphics, and you wonder how Bell can do something like this for $10 above base price. Well played, my friend. There's just enough honey in this pot to attract a few bees. Fitment wise, the revolver tends towards the round side of neutral. It costs 260 bucks, and if you're a sport bike rider who values ventilation, wears earplugs, and fancies a flip up helmet, it's actually a decent choice. Otherwise, most people will just find it too loud and too leaky. And those are the best ventilated motorcycle helmets. Thanks for watching.